Cool. Awesome. All right. So what, what I'll do, I'm just going to share my screen and I'll do all the introductions from there on. So yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I think I'll be talking about a little bit of a different topic uh, than the, the other people in this conference. So I'm sharing my full screen and I will go into presentation mode. And from now on, I will not see any chat. So I hope everything was going fine. Uh, somebody will have to call me on my mobile. If uh, Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling. Anyways, like I said, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, my name is Kerry Murphy, and I am one of the founders of The Fabricants. We are a digital fashion house based out of Amsterdam. So a little bit about me. I'm from Finland, but I'm half American, hence the name Kerry Murphy. Uh, I'm an entre entrepreneur based here in Amsterdam, and my background is in film and visual effects. So I worked in the advertising industry here in Amsterdam for about a decade, and I was quite sick of it, uh, because, sim simply because the lack of purpose. I really wanted to find purpose in creativity and technology uh, instead of having to just do projects that were not on my own or doing any good for the world. Hence, I found that the fashion industry was in dire need of digitization. So I'm bringing the tools from the visual effects industry to build the digital only fashion industry, which is super exciting. So today I will be talking about what the Fabricant is and what is it that we do. I'll talk about some of the projects that we have done together with Adidas and all the, let's say, blockchain and crypto space connection that these projects have. Buffalo London, if you know Buffalo London, it's like this big platform shoes that you know was a big hype in the 90s, made popular by the Spice Girls, and now they're coming back in a digital only format. And of course, Atari, a uh, famous game company, and show what kind of digital only clothing we've been designing with them and how we have activated that in the NFT space. And of course, I'll talk about the digital fashion collections from our own designers. And then I'll leave some time, uh, about five to 10 minutes, I have a lot of slides to go through, uh, but I will try to do it in about 20 minutes and try to answer any questions that you might have. So going into the introductions, we say that we are always digital and never ever physical. We're true believers that there's enough physical clothing in the world, which is super unsustainable and environmentally unfriendly. And there are no digital only brands in the world. So why not? Well, we have such virtual, lives, we have virtual identities, and soon we're going to have virtual twins as well. So of course, we're going to start wearing virtual clothing from there onwards. And we say that we waste nothing but data and exploit nothing but our imagination, meaning we are the most sustainable format in the fashion industry. Now, of course, there's a lot of talk, talk about the environmental impact of NFTs, and that's definitely something that we have to keep on top of because it doesn't mean that we have any carbon footprint. We definitely do. But at the moment, we're only 3% of the production of what goes into physical fashion. And you can find research papers on this on our website, thefabricant.com. We converge two different industries. Well, now several different industries. Uh, fashion with visual effects, gaming, and blockchain. But it really started from the visual effects side, now really moving into gaming. And now, of course, starting to implement blockchain as it's a hot topic and honestly, super exciting for a digital only fashion company, because this is what's going to allow us to do drops, limited editions, uh, unique items and introduce the scarcity that really brings the value in this digital only clothing like it does in the fashion industry. These are the type of visual effects uh, content that we create, which is about taking garments from the real world and creating visualizations in the in the 3D world, but the true value of 3D with clothing is to actually create clothing that cannot exist in real life. It's quite boring just to make a digital twin. A lot of people can do that, but can we make fashion fashionable in the virtual space as well? And that's what we're always working on to try to bring that emotion, to try to bring that aesthetic quality into the mix. So the opportunity definitely right now is in gaming. And there's another thing going on, social wardrobe, where people are dressing themselves or dressing their pictures in digital only clothing. And there's a fantastic platform called DressX. So if you go to dressx.com, you can actually tailor your pictures in digital only clothing. And then, of course, Digicouture, what we love doing, 
we sold the world's first digital only garment on the blockchain for nine and a half thousand dollars in May 2019. So it was crypto winter back then. Everybody was a little bit depressed and sad, uh, but this is a major milestone for us and for the fashion industry because it started a, a massive role of PR. And a lot of people were saying, oh, the emperor's new clothes, buying clothing that you, you are not actually wearing. But what is clothing? It's, it's something that you wear. It's something that covers your body and keeps you warm. That's the functional aspect of it. But clothing is actually about our identities, the way we narrate our virtual identities or our, li our identities in our physical lives. And that's really what we're focusing on to allow people to have a new narrative, to take risks. Because in, in, my, in my physical life, I will not put on a red dress and go to the streets and walk around in it. But in my virtual life, I can do that. And it's a safe zone for me to try and do different things to uh, unravel the stereotypical role that has given to me as a white European male. Now I get to be whatever I like in the virtual space. And be fluid because I get to change it around all the time. So I'll start talking about some of the projects that we're doing and show you how we're bridging the gap between the fashion industry and blockchain gaming and interactive. Uh, so we did a campaign together with Carly Foss, who's a supermodel, Adidas and us, where we basically gave away this garment that you see in the right. So we gave that 3D file away on our website for free. Uh, to allow people to create their own content around it. And then we would say that 20 winners with the best content would be minted on known origin marketplace. And three winners would get a cash prize. And I actually heard yesterday that people didn't care so much about the cash prize, but they actually cared about everything else that was going on, which was education, giving out free files, and creating a community around this campaign. So cash was irrelevant, which, which was really nice thing to to see that, that 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 was not the incentive. There were actually about 1,200 plus downloads of the 3D file from our website and more than 300 submissions. And we just released those the 20 winners uh, today. So if you go to our website, thefabricant.com and you go to your projects tab, on the top of it, you will actually see the 20 different winners. Honestly, the, the, the quality has been fantastic and I just love everything that has been done around it. And we're gonna announce the winners tomorrow uh, via our Twitch stream, which is 3 p.m. CET. So this is the garment. Um, so you see it in 3D. And uh, we gave it away. To, but you have to be a 3D creator to be able to work with it. There's no magical tool right now that just allows anybody to, to play with 3D. But that will, of course, come. But for right now, we just really focused on the 3D creators community. We hired, previously to the campaign, some amazing Instagram artists. This is Ruby Gloom, who created some uh, uh, visualizations pre-campaign, together with Blake Catherine, another fantastic uh, 3D creator. And as you can see, we really focused on the, the, the female creator community, because it's a marginalized community within the 3D world. And uh, there's some fantastic creators there. So we're going to give them a spotlight. This is one of the user-generated content by Jin Fong. If you go to his art station, he makes fantastic stuff. I, I find this so beautiful uh, to put together for a campaign. Amazing. Uh, Skiva, I think he's from Ukraine. He's like just creating really, really cool digital fashion content. Uh, I think together with Adobe now as well and on his own stuff. Like absolutely love this again. You know, the avatar, the environment, the lighting, the mood. This is what we call fashion when there's emotion attached. And of course, some funky ones, not only 3D ones. I love this interpretation. Uh, I'm a big fan of jazz music, and this to me screams jazz as well. Everybody can, of course, have their own interpretations of it, but I just love that there was something else in the mix, mix other than just 3D. So moving on to another project that we've done. I was talking about Buffalo London, those big platform shoes made popular by Spice Girls. So together with them, we actually created a digital-only Buffalo shoe, which is on fire. So it's a limited edition of only 100 pairs. So again, if you go to dressx.com, you can actually wear these. Uh, for, for 30 bucks, you can buy an image you're wearing those. For 60 bucks, you can buy a video of you wearing those. And the, typically the way people use it is just on their Instagram. So it's really focused on social media influencers right now who have a need to make content and some unique content with a unique narrative. So it's digital only. 
there will be no physical version. We're definitely not interested in the physicality. Typically when brands come to us and be like, hey, can we create a digital version and a physical version? No, we'll always fight for the digital only version. With brands, it's just not as easy because they don't see the true value. They're so attached to that physicality, which of course the blockchain space is not. So buyers can be dressed in still or moving image, can only be worn in the digital space and a sustainable fashion experience with a vastly reduced carbon impact. So we created, again, a lot of content. Uh, the theme was, uh, what are you burning for? Especially now during the pandemic times, people are frustrated. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of emotion. So we really wanted to ask, what are people burning for in this campaign? So this is a lot of the, the type of imagery that we just created. And then of course we started uh, addressing influencers, really identifying who, who is the Buffalo London uh, target audience and get them to wear it, to drive some heat to the campaign, to get people to buy it. And here we see some, what we call digital fashion knots. The digital fashion knots is our community. The people who are super excited about digital only fashion. And uh, here you see them, they're wearing the digital and shoes and they post it all over uh, Instagram and other social channels. And on the right, I don't know who that is, but I heard that it's a very famous Italian singer. It was actually just posted yesterday. So I still have to look, look go after that and see it. But again, it's, it's a new narrative to tell people who have a need to express themselves in the virtual space in this way. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's definitely for people who love to have a community on, on social media and have a way to connect in certain ways. And typically the message is around sustainability. So the next steps that we're gonna do with this, we're gonna auction it off on the blockchain. We don't know exactly how, but we're regathering in two weeks to talk about that. There's gonna be an AR shoe wearing experience. So everybody can just wear it as a Snapchat filter or another AR filter and to use it in blockchain games. And the way that this is gonna happen, I'll talk about in the next project, which is Atari, e or an engine. So Atari, of course, being a fantastic gaming company, e which is known for a football game uh, from uh, back in the days, an engine, which is a blockchain company. And of, uh, of course, us who uh, did the garment uh, de design for it. So this is what we created. And the funny thing is it's for a football game. We, we dressed uh, a gala dress for the football game. And the initial reaction was like, but it's a dress. How can I play with football with it? But it's the virtual space, so it, it doesn't matter. There's, there's no limitation. It's actually way more cooler to do something completely different because the first reaction was like, oh, let's just create shorts and shirt. But that's not exciting. That Everybody knows that. But now you actually get to wear a gala dress in, in a football game. So we designed this headpiece, the dress, and the, the, the glove as well that you see on the other hand. So, and there's a lot of reference to Atari games and there's a lot of references to, to football. And then again, connecting to that fashion. I find the aesthetic extremely exciting because it, it's something new. It, it, you don't have to necessarily like it as long as you have some type of emotional reaction to it. Hate it, love it, be like, what the fuck is that? But if, if you have no reaction to it, then it's not cool. And I think if it would have been just like shorts and shirt, Nobody would really care, but that's just me. So we call it the Blurry Form. And like I said, it's a collaboration between Atari, Engine, Ebola, and us. Uh, the inspiration is from sports silhouettes and designed to be worn by anyone. And this is interesting, regardless of gender expression. So it can be on any body and it can be on any gender. So males can wear a dress. So again, like once this campaign is fully launched, you can go to dress X and get yourself tailored in a gala dress. And then what, if you buy the NFT, you can also play in multiple different games. So at, at the moment, and this is going to go only until next week. So we're actually going to burn all, all the remaining items. So go to OpenSea, uh, engine marketplace or rareable marketplace and get your NFTs. So you can actually wear them because I think these are going to be rare items. Uh, uh, down the line once we burn all of them. So initially there was about 4,000 items that we have and it's, it hasn't been not that much sold right now. So like once everything is burned, it's definitely going to be a rare item. And of course, there's, then there's going to be that utility across games, platforms, and personalized avatars in the virtual realm. 
So here you see the headpiece, the dress itself, the cloth, and the full key look. So if, you, if there's a long URL down there, but if, if, if you Google Ancient the Fabricant, you, you will find a blog post that will show you uh, how you can utilize it. So you have to dress as the NFT. You can buy it at you know, different marketplaces, Engine, Rarible, or OpenSea. You can unlock it in DressX to get yourself tailored. You can unlock it in various games, but you can also unlock it on uh, the AR experience that eBowler is creating and unlocking it in the game that they're releasing very soon as well, where you can run around in your own unique dress that you own in the, in the football game. So next steps, digital tailoring on dress X and usage in blockchain games. I'm not exactly sure about the timing, but I think we're gonna launch it like once everything's burned. Actually, first it's gonna be taken off the market and then we're gonna burn them. So uh, once, that, once um, the campaign has ended, that's when we introduce the next steps. So yeah, and then I'll of course talk about some digital fashion stuff that we've done. Uh, I'll, now I'm just gonna like click through a lot of this stuff because I wanna show you the type of content that we create and how we introduce it in visual effects and in, in gaming experiences. So th these, these are from a few years back, so there's no blockchain component to this, but I just wanna show you like the, the, the richness of this content because that one file, you can plug into so many different places. And we work with big brands, so this is an off-white sweater. Off-white is from, uh, um, from the creative director of, uh, of Louis Vuitton, from menswear. And we just, this is how we digitize stuff. We just, we just draw the patterns. And this is actually Amber, just drawing patterns. Amber is our creative director who has a foundation in the craftsmanship of fashion. So she knows how to put garments together. And then we use this software called Clow 3D and just wait for the moment because it's like a puzzle piece. You put the patterns together and once you have them together, you hit simulate and boom, there you have your hoodie. And from there on, you start implementing the details into it. So we talk a lot about draping and fitting stitches, seams, materials, thickness of the clothing, those type of things. So these are, again, some of the content that we've created. A very complex jacket. This must have been like more than 60 pattern pieces that need to be constructed like a puzzle. And if you don't have that garment knowledge, you won't be able to do this. So typically what we've noticed with 3D designers, they don't know how to make clothing in 3D because they don't have simply that pattern knowledge because it starts from a flat pattern. So that's the real jacket. And we always say, don't send, don't send us physical clothing, but fashion is so used to the shipping, all of this stuff, but with digital, we can get rid of shipping and, you know, just reduce so much more carbon waste from that. A lot of animations, uh, stills, key looks, shoes. This is from Alexander McQueen's shoe line. And this was an experience in Hong Kong where it was actually people had to make the purchasing decision from a digital item only. So they would receive the item only, the physical item two or three days later. So you couldn't touch it, you couldn't wear it. You just had to look at it as an animation and make your purchasing decision. It started out in Hong Kong, went to Beijing, Shanghai, ended up in Paris, was supposed to go to London and New York, but got stopped there because it was sold out. And then of course, we do our own collections. This is from 2018. We released our first digital only collection. And this was in collaboration with artificial intelligence where Amber, our creative director, actually worked together with the machine that came with like this weird pixelated results. And she used that as inspiration, inspiration to create these collections, which we call as digital couture items. And it was uh, the, the, the concept was uh, going into the Wild West, not knowing what there is because digital fashion space was so new back then. It was a gold rush, kind of like that there's a gold rush in the NFT world right now. The, the, the gold rush for digital fashion is happening simultaneously. So yeah, it's just a lot, a lot of content. And this is truly really focused more on the fashionista side. But then of course we do these type of things as well that really it's more like leisure wear, more like Nike stuff, more like stuff that we can actually imagine in our real lives. I think this is super cool, but it's not the most exciting thing about digital old fashion. And then of course, a lot of tests. It's just important to kind of get that trade and, and the movement in there so people believe it. And we always want to give a sense of like, hey, it looks real because there's one aspect happening that make, doesn't make it real. In this case, it's a ghost garment. So yeah, we work with a lot of brands. 
at the moment. That's how we make our money. Because we simply we cannot make enough money just yet from digital only fashion. But I believe the NFT space is going to help us make that transition. But at the same time, it's super nice to try to bring these brands onto the digital space and get them excited as well. So we do a lot of apparel, uh, Adidas Under Armour, BF Group, you know, which is like Vans and Timberland, North Face, those other brands, Off White, uh, together with Virtual Block, Peak Performance. So a lot of apparel stuff. Under Armour, really love working with those guys. They're based in the United States. And our team, we're, we're a technology company, but we're actually 70% women. Uh, so this picture, of course, is mainly just women, but we, we do have a lot of 3D designers who are guys as well. And we always try to make it very inclusive. And we, we try to, not like unlike a traditional tech company, which is typically guys, we try to actually include as much women as possible because simply it just brings more richness in, into the tech space. Women take different decisions than guys do, and it's that co-creation that makes it super interesting. So yeah, here's my contact details, carryatthefabricant.com. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, at the Fabricant, with a bunch of underscores, and of course, any other place, Discord, uh, Facebook, uh, you name it, you can find us there. So yeah, that's me. I'll uh, leave some space now for, uh, uh, for, for questions. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I have seven minutes and 55 seconds. So yeah, now I'm gonna go into, I see that there's a lot of comments already. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Davy Brown. Really, really awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna look into the Q and A section. Uh, so Futsero Engine asks, hey, Carrie, how are, you, how are you seeing real world fashion apparels being digitized as wearables in the metaverses? What are the complications that could arise since most metaverses are low fidelity in terms of rendering? Great question. So that optimization, because typically what our files are, they gigabytes large. You know, it's really kind of like a heavy visual effects pipeline that we're talking about. And now we have to optimize them, you know, for the so-called metaverse, the, the interactive experiences, which is you typically have to put it like, under four MB, even under one MB. Like you want to get those files as small as possible, but yeah, of course you lose the fidelity. But it's about understanding the technical limitations and knowing how to design within those the technical limitations. So when you talk to a, a fashion designer, uh, once they understand the limitations, they're capable of making the, the type of decisions that still make it fashion. So if you're gonna talk about like, you know, high poly stuff, it's, of course it's not gonna work out, but how do we make low poly stuff still look fashionable? So it, you need to have both sides. You need to have fashion designers who understand that, but you also need to have the technical people who are capable of creating a proper optimization out of it to really keep that fashionable side of it. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. I'm, so I'm just gonna mark it as answer. And Phoenix Tat asks, are there plans to do virtual fashion shows with these or even somehow participate in fashion weeks around the world? I would love to see that. Absolutely, Phoenix. Great question. I, I, ever since the pandemic, it's been the biggest request from fashion brands to be like, hey, what does a virtual fashion week actually mean? What does it mean to digitize a catwalk? And typically they just think of 3D animations or 3D avatars walking on, on, on a catwalk. But we just say, well, the 3D world is much more exciting. So why would we just recreate something that's a hundred years old? Because that's what the catwalk is. I'm trying to redefine what that is. So we, we've seen a lot of play there. We've seen VR experiences, AR experiences, films, uh, virtual showroom platforms. There's a lot of things happening, but because it's so new, people are really trying out. But what happened in kind of like the first wave of digital fashion weeks, it was not exciting enough. It did, it did not create the same type of excitement as people typically got from the fashion weeks. And they're st still struggling with that. But it's important to keep on doing and trying because we're already starting to see like virtual events that people are super excited about. Um, experiences like what, you know, Fortnite did uh, uh, with their, uh, uh, I forget the name of the, of the artist, but they had like 12 million people be part of that festival. Or, or the concert, which was only 16 minutes long. And, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, it's the best thing I've seen. So again, 
you know, we, we just need to, we, we need to work with those brands who are, you know, willing to invest in it. And I think the best example in that is uh, what Balenciaga did. They actually released a video game uh, right before Christmas, which uh, was super nice. It was not great. It was not the holy grail. It's, it was not like, you know, showcasing like uh, that this is the exact future of fashion, but it's giving a glimpse into it. And it's great to see that they really jumped into it and they really tried something new. It had a narrative and it was fashion. I think, I think both world were super excited. But the next step, of course, is to make it even more interactive because right now it's just kind of like running through environments and looking at stuff. So there was a little bit of a narrative, but well, what they've done now was super cool. And of course, we're working in that space the whole time as well, trying to redefine what is a digital fashion catwalk. And you know, there's no one formula. It can be so many different things. Uh, it's like, it's it's the cliche, the imagination is your limitation. And then of course, you know, budgets, you know, technicalities, timelines, those type of things. But we're starting to see more and more brands going there. And there's some great examples like, you know, what uh, uh, League of Legends, Louis Vuitton, I think that came out in 2019, Nike on Fortnite, North Face and Gucci on Pokemon Go, uh, Moschino on Sims, and a lot more. Honestly, like all the, all the brands, you know, see gaming as the big opportunity right now. But what they're not seeing with the NFT space, they don't fully understand it yet because it actually gets rid of the physicality of fashion. And that's super vulnerable for, for a fashion brand who makes you know millions in revenue from physical only clothing to actually remove that. So but definitely this year, we're going to start seeing way more uh, uh, brands jumping into the space. We're, we're talking to several, one of them, uh, but the language is still so new and you know different brands are at different stages of digitization. So of course for us, you know, as native digital people, it's a, it's a fluent language, but we have to remember that not everybody it has a virtual life or even sees the value in it. So of course that's gonna really accelerate right now. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I have two minutes left and I was given the task, unless there's more, more questions, anybody please ask in the next two minutes. Uh, but, I, but I was giving the task to actually choose the best question because the best question will get an NFT from the organizers. So if there's anybody else who wants to ask a question in the next, uh, uh, let's say 20, 30 seconds, uh, otherwise I will have to choose between Futsero and Engine and Phoenix Tats on who has the best question, which is really shit task actually. Like what? <laughs> they're both great questions. Why do I have to choose one or the other? Uh, and it's just like based on my personal opinion. So uh one of you please don't take it personal that i choose the other one uh i have no criteria for uh for, for this one uh, uh oh i love that one <laughs> do you plan to move into digital fashion for pets i haven't had that one yet, but but i have heard for babies do we plan on making digital fashion for babies is something that i've heard do you plan to move into digital fashion for pets we actually uh we actually uh dressed a horse in 2018 we dressed the horse so we we've done it let's just say it was not the most fashionable thing but of course you know like you know it's just so exciting you can do anything in in, in digital so absolutely why not but again it's a question how do we make it fashionable so yeah oh you just up the ante on on with that question okay davy brown uh i love what you're doing so much but how are you addressing the oh fuck there's a lot of question oh sorry guys oh man i had to i had to scroll down okay now i have to uh, go fast I, I love what you're doing so much but how are you addressing the sustainability issue real life fashion is number two industry in terms of pollution during production but minting nfts and blockchain related currently involves yeah exactly yeah so uh that that's a big big discussion point right now DressX is doing some research and we're joining in that. Thanks a lot, David Brown, for that. Uh, honestly, I don't have the best answer. You know, it, it, it's such a new, I, I, I just heard about it a month ago. So we, you know, we have to really be on top of that. Absolutely. So that, thanks so much for pushing that. That's going to be definitely interesting for everybody to be answering. Uh, do you create digital layers in your fashion? Yep, we do. And these digital fashion is free size. Yeah, you can change the size as you wish. Are you finding more and more style possibilities now that the limitations to physical world are removed? Absolutely. You know, creative, that's the way the creativity starts blossoming. You're welcome, Futsero. 
uh, wow, fascinating. What is your vision for the next five years? Will most people in the crypto own some NFT clothes? Yes, we're moving into that. That's the future of digital only fashion, giving people ownership of them, but then also utility, utility and ownership. I always say, you know, NBA Top Shot, Crypto Kitties, Async Art, my favorite platforms, all the answers for digital clothing are there. I'm looking for great examples to show. I can market to shop owners. Any more info? Uh, Ryan, yeah, please get in touch. I would love to chat. I really believe AR will be a big part and possible hologram, 4K projections, ideas. Yeah, AR is going to be massive. It just needs to get through some technicalities. I think Snapchat is the leader in body tracking and there's some fantastic stuff coming out of there. Thanks, Ryan. Tira Pace, which software did you say you use to create digital patterns clothing? It's called Clo 3 d C-L-O 3D. It's the reason why we were able to even start our company. Fantastic piece of software. Phoenix Tat says, choose food zero. Wow, I love that. That's so nice of you. Is that like reverse psychology to try and make me choose you? Oh my God, making it, making it hard. Thanks, Phoenix Tat. Victor, wow, fascinating. Oh, some of these questions uh, are here twice. 3D and hologram for hybrid situations. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm out of time. Oh, so, sorry, guys. I really didn't realize that I had to uh, scroll down. But, uh, uh, okay, Futsero Engine, it is. I, I mean, I, I love that question. And Phoenix Tat uh, uh, opted up, as well. So I'll, I'll go with that. But honestly, uh, David Brown, I, I love your question too. You know, fashion is already unsustainable. You know, what we have to worry about is the energy in our computers. And now with this whole Japan happening around NFT and the energy waste, it's massive. Like, as I understand it, you know, like, but I have no way of verifying that. I just have to believe whatever sources I, I find. But yeah, that's definitely something to be on top of. And if you have any ideas, if you can educate me on that, I would love to hear it. You know, that's that's definitely one of my main priorities for the coming period. So yeah. That's, that's it for me. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions for me, hit me up on uh, email, carry at Uh I think that's probably the best, best place. You'll find me on Clubhouse Talks as well here and there, uh, some of the NFT rooms, but a lot of digital fashion rooms. Uh, so yeah, that's it for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to end the session right here, I guess. And uh, I wish you all a very nice day and a very great conference. Absolutely. I absolutely loved all the other ones that I've seen so far. So a really, really good content, a really great community. So thank you so much for the organizer, organizers. Really appreciate it. I wish everybody a great day, great week, and I hope to speak to you all very soon. So take care. I'm going to end the session now. Bye-bye.